You've all seen bits and pieces of Bart's construction. Maybe you've watched some Market Street digging, seen the completed Albany aerials, been inconvenienced in downtown Oakland or on Shattuck Avenue in Berkeley, passed Orinda Crossroads and figured all those bulldozers were just leveling another hillside for another freeway. But whatever you've seen or bypassed or wondered about, you've only seen a small part of a 75-mile system now being built in three counties. We want you to see some facts about your new interurban rapid transit system, not just read about it. So watch and we'll keep quiet most of the time. First, let's take a look from the air. The completed Albany aerial structures, part of the Richmond Berkeley line. The same type of aerials under construction in Hayward, a section of the Fremont Oakland line. And incidentally, even as you watch this film, all the construction you're looking at has progressed. What you're seeing is how it looked the day we filmed it. And the day our camera saw this was several months ago. Entrance to the downtown Oakland subway. The Lake Merritt Tidal Outfall. up Broadway and the crossover to the Berkeley and Contra Costa lines. Now let's look more closely. First, getting ready for the Trans Bay Tube linking Oakland and San Francisco, which will enter the bay at the site of the Oakland Mall, cross under the bridge and enter the Market Street subway under the ferry building. Pilings that mark the old ferry boat slips must be pulled up and hauled away. High pressure hoses loosen dirt around the base. The old San Francisco wharves, dating back to the time of ferry boat commuting, are removed to make way for high-speed trains, which will make the trip from Oakland to San Francisco in eight minutes. The tube itself will consist of 57 sections like this one, ready for launching at Bethlehem Shipyard. Each double-barreled section is 350 feet long and weighs some 800 tons when it slides into the bay. After launching, the section is nudged to an outfitting dock where reinforced concrete is applied to the interior walls until its weight reaches 12,000 tons more than a World War II Liberty ship. In the early morning hours when traffic is light on the bay, the section is towed to the Oakland side where it's slung beneath a giant catamaran barge and gently lowered into place along a shallow trench dredged across the floor of the bay. Hydraulic couplers lock each section to its mate. They're made watertight and the process is repeated for the 57 sections and four long years. While section after section of Bay Tube is built and launched, BART's work progresses in more than a dozen sites in the three counties. Demolition to make way for aerial structures. Cut and cover in downtown Oakland for the subway. Moving utilities and sewers for the San Francisco subway. But one substantial contribution to the system is being made far enough from your front door that it's no inconvenience at all. The Kaiser plant in Napa is making steel tunnel liners for the 21 miles of subway, almost one third of the total BART system. First, a gang burner cuts the five ton sheet of steel. A 
giant magnet lifts the cut piece. After the inside seams are welded, this section will be bent. The final large ring undergoes processing, some automatic. The bent sections go to the huge welding bay. More treatment and constant inspection. Finally, milling and grinding to complete each three-ton ring. Stacked and stored, ready to be placed in BART subways. Closer to home and part of your surface ride, Orinda Crossroads. These bulldozers were leveling a hillside for a new freeway. Not only relocated, but widened to accommodate BART trains in the median strip. It's estimated that this portion of the Concord to Berkeley line will save taxpayers millions of dollars because of the joint use of a narrow transportation corridor by BART and the California Division of Highways. What about the route from Orinda to Berkeley? over the hills where there is no transportation corridor, even a narrow one? The answer is, through these hills. We can fly from the east portal, Orinda side, to the west portal in a few minutes. It's taking two years to tunnel these hills, but your BART train will make the trip in three and one half minutes. So now the highlight of our get ready year breaking through from the east and west portals of the Berkeley Hills Tunnel. A BART staff member watched the breakthrough, and he reports, Thursday, February 23rd, 1967, 11 p.m. Word goes out, tunnel will hold through sometime during the graveyard shift. Friday, February 24th, 2.10 a.m. Deafening din as jumbo rig crew drills holes and face for first of what was to be three blasts during the shift. 2.30 a.m. During a pause, speculation on part of the miners as to who will win the $300 pool predicting exact minute of breakthrough. 60 men, $5 apiece. Dynamite set off in small charges for safety of both crews working so close together. Told it would be a long night. 4 a.m. Muck crew cleans up face from last blast. Discouraging report. Tunnelers have to install two more tunnel rings before another blast. 6 a.m. Exciting news. Tunnelers have opened a three-foot-long shaft for the drill and can talk to the Arinda crew. Furious work with pry rods and larges hold the size of a football and last blast neatly opens the entire top of the face. Both crews move sharply to shore up ceiling and then, after 446 days of working opposite each other, exchange places in their own type of ceremony. <laughs> Saturday, February 25th, 10 a.m. Alameda and Contra Costa County officials, BART directors, engineers, members of the press don yellow slickers to take the first ride all the way through the fourth longest vehicular tunnel in the United States and meet in a modest ceremony deep in the Berkeley Hills marking the holding through. And when your BART train emerges from the Berkeley Hills Tunnel, it will glide along another median strip, that of the Grove Shafter Freeway, so-called missing link in the Bay Area's highway system. BART trains will enter the downtown Oakland subway from the Grove Shafter Freeway median. And you will enter the same subway from Southern Alameda County at 8th and Fallon Streets, a few blocks from BART's headquarters building and automatic train control complex, nerve center for the computerized 75-mile network. Work started on this subway in late fall 1965. A year ago, this section of the subway had progressed this far.
Today, the structure is ready for tracks, trains, and ultimately, you. What will the aerials really look like? Completed and landscaped like this. The four and one half mile test track between Concord and Walnut Creek. We can't show you the Market Street subway yet. But if you don't like temporary detours, traffic jams and gaping holes, wait. Construction of the downtown Oakland subway makes a few detours seem like a picnic. And Berkeley pedestrians and motorists are already living with huge excavations. As General Manager B.R. Stokes told the Commonwealth Club in April 1967, the next two years or so will be years of travail, of digging dirt, of erecting steel, of pouring concrete. I pledge that everyone associated with the district will do his level best to deliver this system to you as nearly on schedule as is humanly possible. We've said that it will be the finest in the world. We promise you it will be no less than that. Today, more than half the 75-mile system is under construction. But tomorrow, next month, next year, as heavy construction increases, you'll find more detours, not fewer, more blocked-off traffic lanes and excavations, all of which are necessary inconveniences, but happily temporary. So when you see this, or this, or this. Remember, this daily reality of inconvenience is all part of getting ready. Getting ready to bring you the speed, the safety, the comfort and convenience, and the economy of the world's newest interurban rapid transit system.